Wondering where CMBT2 is here, and of course, people will start comparing the Gacha system with Genshin Impact and also cool other games, punishing Grey Raven. Some people still feel that Wondering Wave Gacha isn't good enough when compared to PGR. So here I am giving my constructive opinion about Wondering Wave Gacha system. Alright, for the starter, let me give a quick info about Wondering Wave Gacha. First, as per CBT2, there are 5 banners in the game, standard and limited character banners, standard and limited weapon banners, and a novice banner that will gun after you finish pulling there. The character banner Heart PT is at 80 pulls with a 50-50 rate to obtain the limited character. Pretty much the same as Genshin with 10 fewer pulls. The weapon banner Heart PT is also at 80 pulls but you are guaranteed to obtain the rate up weapon when you get a 5 star weapon. This in itself is already a massive upgrade from Genshin, but it doesn't stop here. In the shop, we could buy dupes of the limited character, making free to play capable of getting the copy of the character they want. And it also make Wailer save a huge amount of money when they want to max a character. Now that I have explained watering gacha system, let's talk about why I think they didn't make the character banner have a guarded PT like PGR. To understand that, we're going to see in the real player perspective. Now to max a character in PGR, you need 1 base and 10 copies of the character. 1 copy is obtainable free from the shop, so in total you need 1 base and 9 copies. PT is 60 pulls, so the maximum amount of pulls you must do is 600 pulls. For Warrior Wave, you need a total of 1 base and 6 copies of the character. The Heart PT is 160 pulls, if you always lose 50-50. You need to pull 1120 pulls, but don't forget the 2 copies from the shop. Note that the dupe cost in the shop is equal to 40 pulls, so that 2 copy costs 80 pulls. Hard PT for 2 copy is 320, so that means it saves 240 pulls from that 1120. In total, you need 880 pulls to max a character. But wait a minute, isn't that 280 pulls more than in PGR? Well, yes, but let me tell you the interesting part here. The money cost to reach the PT is almost the same. In PGR, you need a total of 150,000 premium currency or 600 pulls. The highest pack that costs $100 gives you 6,000 currency, which means you need to buy 25 times. Meanwhile, watering waste needs a total of 140,800 premium currency with the $100 pack giving 6,480 currency. Meaning you only need to buy about 21.7 times to max a character. Now, PGR does have other discounted bundles in every patch, so it doesn't need to buy all 25 packs, but it will probably be the same with Watering Wave. There may be several discounted packs too later on. For the weapon banner, it is debatable whether 80 pulls for PT is still too high since the PT in PGR is just 30 pulls with an 80% rate up. So I'll give you a reason why it is already good. First is how important the weapon is in the game. As the first limited weapon, Jian weapon looks pretty great with a total of 48% increase to heavy attack when using intro skill and resonance. But this weapon is not limited to just Jian. You could use it to any character that use brute sword as the skill is not being locked to a single target. Why I say it like this is because in PGR, several signature weapon, especially the new one, now give a big change just for the signature character skill, making the worth of having the weapon exponentially more important. 
but note that the weapon is only usable for just one character, while Gian limited weapon can be used by any brute sword user that use heavy attack. If you want the weapon gacha system just like PGR, then you get the consequence of having the weapon only able to be used by one character and the chance of some of the character kits are taken to the weapon. Now this is my opinion as per close beta to Gian weapon. We still don't know if the next weapon will be locked to the character or not, but I presume it will be the same since they already made Gian weapon passive skill not being locked to himself. The only bad thing about the weapon right now is the fact that you need a copy of it to raise the skill just like Genshin. And for those F2P players that complain about the character and banner having 50-50 and hoping it to be a 100% chance, they could make the rate to 60-70% but the chance for them to give a 100% rate is somewhat hard and for those that think that making the banner rate 100% granted will make people spend more, especially hoping for those free to play to spend, it will be the opposite cause the reason most F2P did not spend is that they don't have excess money and I'm talking about truly free to play, not light spender here okay? Will spend their money because they have a huge amount of money to spend. Dolphin spend because they have some money to spend. But not every free to play have that luxury. If they have excess money, they will use it more for life improvement, new food, new clothes, or other things that are needed more than paying for a gacha game. Heck, buying a paid game is better than paying for a gacha game. And it will be even worse if every free to play can get a new character every patch. That will make the chance of them spending even less. Who need to spend when they always guaranteed to get? Character is the main reason people spend in the gacha. It will make those light spender that only wants the characters to stop spending to, since they also guaranteed to get the character. And it will make less money from whale since the cost will be so much lower for them. It will pretty much half the cost from 2 grand to about 1 grand USD, counting by the cost of the pack in CBT2 right now. But all those, most of the gacha game profit is from small spender. It's fine if we'll spend less. It is correct. More than half of the profit comes from small to medium spender. The rest is from wheels, but here is the problem. We're making every new character granted to pull for free to play increase the sale. Genshin itself is proof that a gacha can be predatory but still amass a huge amount of money. Genshin doesn't have a money problem anymore. They have enough money to finish the game development. That is why Kuro changed the gacha system to be better than Genshin so they can compete against them by making the banner cost less. People will feel that spending in Watering Wave is much better than in Genshin. They hope to take those people that spend a bit to feel that they have a better chance when they spend in here than in Genshin. Is Watering Wave a predatory gacha system? We don't know yet. People say Genshin is a predatory game because of that 50-50. Yes, it is one of the reasons, but it's not just that reason. Genshin is predatory because they never give enough gems. They never give enough gems if you lose the 50-50 in every character patch. It makes free to play think about which character they want to pull, while Genshin tries the best to lure those free to play and light spender to pay. By giving character trials of the player, let's see whether they like it or not. Giving character story to make player likes the character even more, and many other things. And it is truly effective. And Genshin annual revenue is insane. Genshin got 950 million dollar in 2023, while paid games like Baldur Gate 3 got 650 million dollars. And while I'm in it. Why do gacha games that limit several of their character kits need 
people spent a significant amount of money to max a character. About $3,000 to max a Genshin character is not cheap at all. Not everyone can do it. Warrior Wave need about $2,000 to max the character as per CBT2. PGR also needs $2,000 plus dollar to max the character. Why is it so expensive? Why cannot they make it so that every mid spender can max a character too? Paid games nowadays cost $70 to $100. If every medium spender is also able to spend like $100, $200 to max a character that pretty much covers a lot of problem. There's a lot of gacha game that makes duplicate easy to access. Makes duplicate have all small effect or make them less relevant. Like Arknight does cost a lot to max a limited character, but the dude importance is very low. It doesn't change any mechanic or giving new skill set. And even better, they have a universal dupe too. Meanwhile, Genshin have several characters that change how they play when getting a copy, like Raiden Constellation 2 or Yelan Constellation 6. And if Waterloo's copy Genshin duplicate system, it will be the same too. Now, I'm not saying Waterloo Wave needs to change their gacha right now, since this is a long term expensive game like Genshin. They want to make sure that they have enough people paying them so they can continue developing the game cause the risk is extremely high for them. They already reduced the cost better than Genshin and there isn't any high cost game that have the same gacha system like Genshin that has a very low cost to max a character. That is why Kuro cannot risk it. But even if they don't, one day there will be another gacha game that is on par or has a better of combat system and better gameplay than at least can compete with Genshin and Warrior Wave and maybe have a hundred grand PT. Maybe they will reduce the cost to max the character even more to compete against them. It will continue until they reach a threshold about maybe two or three times the cost of paid games about $100-$300 per max character. I understand that this game costs a lot to make but there are also other ways to get money other than fully selling the character. I'm not saying that they need to make the character too, too easy to get but if they want to limit some of the character kit they could have lowered the cost that make mid-range spender afford it too because $3,000, $2,000 is just too expensive. That is why they're only like 1-2% of will. Yes, they give a good amount of income, but they can change how they will. Like from selling skin, sell it for $100, $200, will will still able to afford and mid spender could also afford it. They could sell things that do not affect the Gameplay. I'm saying this because what if Watering Wave could revolutionize the gacha predatory system? What if they could make a gacha system that truly is the base of other new gacha games alike? Do you want in the future people to say, look, this is the game that changed how every new gacha system games work, the one that makes it not predatory anymore, the one that makes it balanced? Or people say, look, this is the game that reduced their gacha cost lower than Genshin, but still expensive. They may have better gameplay, but I'm waiting this new gacha game that is open world, have a great gameplay too, and the gacha cost is even lower than them. And then, history will repeat until they reach the threshold that I just said, two to three times the cost of paid game for every max character. All this talking that we just went through is also on the assumption that they give enough chance to pity per patch. Since we don't know how many they will give every patch, will it be enough to get 80 pulls? Will it be even more than 80 pulls? We still don't know about it. If we can pity twice every new limited character patch, means all the 50-50 free-to-play complaints that we just talked about, 
are a waste of time since that means you still guaranteed the limited 5 star every patch for FTP. Now the highest chance is either enough to earn a hard PT once, 80 plus pool, or 1.5 a PT, about 120 plus pool. The best one is getting 120 plus pools. That means some people could spend a bit can buy the money card to hard PT and those that were lucky could spend at the weapon banner. These gems per patch stuff are important because if they do make the character banner guaranteed 100%, how many pulls will they give every update? The reason punishing Grey Raven is good is that you are got enough to PT a character every patch. But what if you only got half or even fewer pulls? You're gonna need to spend or skip a character or just get lucky. And if you wonder about my opinion about the 50-50 rate, you should know that the base of gacha, the gacha pawn machine, has a 100% rate to get what you want. If there is one thing in the machine that you want and there are 100 items there, the pity is 100, but you are guaranteed to get what you want. 50-50 literally means that after 100 pulls, you didn't get what you want, it will put another 100 item in the machine and makes you spend again. Kacha is not from the 50-50 but from the chance of getting the things you want before the PT. 50-50 rate is a system that Kacha can make to make you spend more, to make you more addictive to Kacha. The 0% blah 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 is the base of Kacha. 50-50 is there to make it worse. Overall, the point here is that Kurok knows their limit. They already make the cost to max a character as low as PGR and is about $1,000 lower than Genshin. Can they make it lower? Maybe. I don't know how much they spent to make the game. I assume it was about the same as Genshin, $100 million or even less. They need to make sure they get enough money to pay the cost of the game, plus enough money to continue making the game. That is why they don't take a high rigs. But there is a way to lower the rigs, in my opinion, by using Kickstarter or a fundraising project to let them know how many people are willing to pay for the game. They can sell the $5 monthly pass, the $25 battle pass, and more expensive bundle to see how many free to play, small spender, mid spender and whale is willing to pay for the game plus this can reduce the fear of failing to cover the game production costs if half of the 10 million people pre-registered in china spend five dollar it's already 25 million dollar if all 10 million spend five dollar it's 15 million already not counting global players and also whaler if they are willing to hear player feedback then i'm sure players can give something to make them trust the player too because they don't trust free to play people saying if the rate is 100 i will pay for it but nothing to prove that they will spend other than that complaint but by this fundraising project those that pay will have mutual trust with kuro their feedback will have more trust because they are willing to spend money. The one that makes the game continue are not the free to play, it is those that pay for it so they can feed their family, their electricity bill, and their tax. I hope that they can change how gacha games work and even if they don't do it, then it's fine. It's understandable because maybe in the known future, other companies will do it. If I make a mistake or if there is some information, please tell me in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Peace.